Organized 365 Madness. Now, I know very little about sports. Maybe it's turning 50. I'm turning into a sports fan. Oh my goodness, I watched the Super Bowl and I actually watched the football players, not just the commercials. So I've watched a couple of these March Madness games, the actual basketball games. This is a Grayson size basketball, by the way. Here's what I've observed. This is dribbling. See, that's how you do it. This is not, this is not what they're doing in March Madness. This is what they're doing. They're going. That, that is traveling. That is traveling. I said to Greg, they're traveling. And another play, I'm like, he's traveling. I'm like, then we go to a different game. I'm like, that guy's traveling. Greg goes, it's not a thing anymore, Lisa. Like, that's just how they dribble now. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean traveling is, that's the whole point of basketball is that you have to keep bouncing the ball. No, like palming it. And what, what planet are we on? When I went to grade school, this was dribbling. This not dribbling. Also, how in the world are people getting away with the fact that housework, as defined by Google, is work that is done at home? What fourth grade teacher would define? I don't understand. I don't understand. You and me, like we're playing by different rules. We went to school. We learned that you can't define the word with the word. When you're going to bounce the basketball, you can't do this. Like we're playing by the rules. <laughs> Maybe that's a problem. Maybe that's a problem. We're all playing by the rules. We think there are rules that we're playing by, but the people that are in the pros, Google, the searcher of everything, the NBA basketball players, they're not, they're not playing by the rules that we're still playing by in grade school. And I think that is the biggest thing that I've come to as a realization as an adult. And what I want to share with you in Organize 365, you guys, we're playing by these imaginary rules that we think everybody's playing by. And we're holding ourselves to those rule standards in our houses when nobody is judging us whatsoever. We're constantly feeling judged. Uh, but that's a whole nother sidebar. Uh, that's kind of like a mini podcast episode, which we'll get to in a minute. We are looking at our bracket and we are down to the elite eight. We are gonna have our final four here in a couple of minutes. The first category is the Sunday basket and the Sunday basket is going head to head with the Sunday basket club. I, I don't even know, how do you report on it's like a mom and dad. The Sunday basket has a club. The club is no good without the Sunday basket. How do you, how do you pick which one you want? They, they come as a package deal. It doesn't really seem fair that you have to vote which part of this that you like more than the other. So let's take a, a look at the Sunday basket for a minute. Now, you know, we have the little kid clip coming out of the stands to hold on the bonus that the Sunday basket announced in the last game right now in the month of April, starting tomorrow, actually, starting tomorrow. If you already have a Sunday basket, if you order a Sunday basket, we have four, four bonus hours in the app, in the Sunday Basket Club, where we're gonna deep dive into how to get your Sunday basket set up. So the Sunday basket, she's got a bonus. She's coming in, she's like, you, you can't even get in the club without me. Like, I'm literally, you have to buy me this is the bonus you get. How can the club beat the Sunday basket? Because if you don't have the Sunday basket, you can't, you can't get in the club. I, I don't know. What do we do in the Sunday basket club? Why is it all ready to the elite eight? Like, why is this little piece of paper so exciting? And I think it's exactly how I started. You guys, we are doing our best at home. We're trying to do it all. The laundry, the dishes, the cooking, the cleaning, the organizing the working, the parenting, the working from home, the, all the things, we're doing all of the things. And we feel like we're juggling all of these balls. And what do we do with them? We learn how to put them in the Sunday basket so that we can live a proactive instead of a reactive life. But you know, emptying your brain out onto paper and putting it in a basket only works for about a week. And then if you don't go through that basket every single Sunday, you know what happens? You gotta turn that off. Chaos, chaos happens. It's a timer on this, the top. There are like three cameras. She's, no, no, other, other camera, other, yes, yes, that camera, very good. Thank you so much. Um, how do you, how do you manage your active to-dos that are in your head? Your running to-do list that is never ending, that is never going to end. You have to create a new habit. You have to create a weekly habit where you go through this basket. I'm just gonna be honest with you. 
The Sunday Basket, she's awesome. I love her so much. I do not want to go through her on Sunday. I, I don't. I don't. Sometimes I do. About every six weeks, I spend a couple hours and I love it and I reorganize everything. The rest of the time, you have to. You have to go through it. Enter the Sunday Basket Club. The Sunday Basket Club is in our community app. It's a place where you can ask your questions all week long. We've got professional organizers in there. They'll answer your questions. There's a 90 minute co-working time on Sunday. We go through the Sunday basket together. We deep dive into all of these different slash packets that we have and just keep you on task. And we do it as friends. And when Monique's lady in the group, she hides chocolate in her basket, which reminds us we can have fun with all these habits that we need to do. Um, and I think that's why the Sunday basket club made it to the elite eight because we want community, don't we? Like we want people to do organizing with, to help us on these habits that we're learning and we're growing in our baby organizing muscles. And we just want to hear we're doing a good job. We want somebody to say, I see you. I'm doing it too. We can all do it together. So the Sunday Basket Club is not going to move on to the final four. The Sunday Basket is actually moving on to the final four, but it doesn't matter because you literally get the Sunday Basket Club in the Sunday basket. So we're going to just drop her in there. And so together they're going to go on to the final four because like I said, they're inseparable. Off they go. That is your first of the final four, the Sunday basket. Woo! The competition, it is getting tough out there. Next, we're talking about all these things that we juggle at home. And in the productive home solution, it comes with a planner that you can repurchase. And it comes with planning day. We talked about this last time about how we typically will plan our year three times a year in January around Mother's Day to Memorial Day and uh, Labor Day here in the United States. Those three energies you naturally want to declutter. And then we grab that energy that you have and we love it and we fan that flame and we get you to move forward into your organizing and decluttering as far as we can until it's natural. All of our energy will go away for organizing by the time you get to July. Who does anything in July? Literally, like July is the Bermuda Triangle of months. No, nobody does anything in July. You have December, December, holidays, merriment, enjoyment, not organization. Like you're not organizing in December, totally natural. That's why in August and in January, you are ready. Like you are ready to get organized again. And we literally go through and we plan out all of these things that we need to do in the next cycle. What habits do we need to add? What um, tasks of daily organization? Like, what's our laundry schedule gonna be like? What's our meal planning? Have you ever noticed? You eat different foods in the spring, in the summer, in the winter. Are you grilling in the winter? Only if you live in Florida. Are you having things in a crock pot in the summertime? Not usually. Like, we even eat different at different seasons of the year. So let's start planning differently. Let's look at our home like it is the 36 hours a week that we spend running it. Let's really look at that time and plan it out. Then there's the work box. And the work box says, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all nice uh, home organization planning day. Yeah, but are you being paid for that? I mean, nobody's paying you for that. You've got to save money. Don't, don't worry about that time. I'm more important. Like the paid work is more important. You need to organize all of your ideas that you have and your work so you can productively get it done. So you can move up the corporate ladder so you can get more money so you can have more time to do what? If you, what, what good is it to earn more time in your job if you don't know how to spend it on the weekends and in the evenings? So you really could go home and read a book, binge a TV show without guilt. Like we want to be able to do all of those things. And um, you know what, Workbox? We've been prioritizing you for a century. And a lot of us have decided it's, it's time to take care of ourselves. It's time to take care of our families. It's time to take care of our households. It's time to press into what we are uniquely created to do. And it's kind of an upset to me, but it's kind of what's happening in society. The work box has to, you know, move on off of the court because the planning day, people are really starting to prioritize planning their work, planning their home. I'm super excited. I never thought the Productive Home Solution planning day would make it to the final four. Are you kidding me? Like, how cool is this? That we can prioritize our home and our family and our uniqueness 
and elevate it so that it's not work-life balance, but it is work-life integration. Like our life is as important or more important than our work. So yay for the Productive Home Solution Planning Day. Our next one is going to be May 7th. I cannot wait to help you guys plan an awesome, epic summer. The Productive Home Solution Planning Day is moving on to the final four. I mean, wow, is this, this is going to be a head-to-head -head competition going on this weekend. I'm, I'm kind of afraid to come in Monday to find out what happens and who's going to go to the championship in that category. But we need to move on. We need to move on to the other half of our bracket. And over there, we have the Holiday Blitz going up against the paper solution. Now these, these are two totally different um, things that need to be organized in our lives. These are two different ways of learning. Like do you learn through an interactive weekly challenge with a community group of people where everybody's doing the same thing all at the same time? Or do you learn from a book that is very well organized a how to start to finish to get all of your paper organized asynchronously whenever it is uh, most dependent for, on you? Do you learn best when you're organizing like something specific, like the holiday blitz, an area of your life where it's memory making and, and um, I just wanna say fun chaos, like the fun chaos of the last six weeks of the year, or the really essential skills of getting your paperwork in order, like being an adult, having a financial binder and having a Sunday basket and the how-to of doing all of those things which one, which one can you vote for? Obviously, both are important, both are fun, and both are able to do, this one's 12, uh, $18, this one is free. Like, it's not a lot of financial investment here, it's more of your energy investment. Do you like to energy invest in community and doing things in a quick week? Or do you wanna uh, invest in your personal growth and in the things that really, you know, we all have to do them. We're just not all necessarily doing them. I'm proud of you guys. I'm really proud of you. You voted for the things we know we need to do, right? Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's the favorite solution. This is a really close one. We thought that the Holiday Blitz won, but no, it really is the paper solution. At the end of the day, um, you really need to have your paper in order. So the, the paper solution, is our third of the final four. And then we've got the last category here. We've got the podcast, the Organized 365 podcast, almost 15 million downloads. You guys, you think that I have a script for this? I do not have a script for this. This basketball was bought at Walmart last night. I've been dribbling it around, actually really dribbling it, like real dribbling, thank you very much, all around the office today. And I'm just so excited to talk to you about all these fun things that we're doing. I, I literally talked to two different people today about podcast episodes I wanna record, a whole teacher series that I might do in the summer. Talking's my thing. I, I really like to talk. I like to look around, see things that are out there, and then bring those back to how do they affect us at home. You know, I think a big thing that's going on in society right now is the fact that we've prioritized work so long. It's the same timer. <laughs> we've prioritized work so long that um, our houses have suffered more than we care to let them suffer. And now we're willing to say, you know what? It, it's time for me and my house to take priority over my uh, work. That's a conversation that we can have in a podcast. All these ideas that come to me, I think about them for a while and then I think, how do we make the invisible work that is happening at home really visible? How can we not just say, women are doing more work than men or something like that, something that's gonna be a media headline, but really like, why have we explained? Like if it's invisible work, do we even know that we're doing it? And once that we know that we're doing it, can we articulate it in a way that we can lovingly share how and why we do what we do? Like we need to really be able to make our work visible before we could talk about who's going to do the work going forward. That's the podcast. Well, the podcast is up against the financial binder. It's kind of like the last category where it's like, we know we gotta do it. You need to know where your money is. You know, I will tell you the financial binder is the last binder I personally made myself. I made the reference binder first. I always had an ops binder because 
I was a teacher, so having a lesson plan for my family, super fun and exciting for me. And then I had to have a medical binder because my kids had medical needs. And then I was like, oh, the financial binder. Like I didn't, I just didn't want to do it. You know why I didn't want to do it is because it wasn't really about finding the money and putting in the financial binder. It was about finding all the debts and the obligations and the insurances that cost a fortune and the liabilities. Like, you know, when I made my financial binder, we were not debt free. So it wasn't like a rosy binder to be making. And the first financial binder I made before I made my own was my father's and his estate was insolvent. Like, so I was opening mail that hadn't been opened for three or four months. And I was trying to figure out how to get into his computer. And I was dealing with multiple lawyers and all kinds of things. It was not a pleasant experience. So I didn't want to make my financial binder. But now that I have it made, I know that if anything happens to me, um, that Greg and the kids will be able to pick up on our finances and move forward. And so it's essential, it's important, but I tell you what, you really have to get your mind around what does it mean to be a CEO of your home? And I don't mean it by like, you have to be all stuffy and corporate and CEO and everything has to have a checklist. I mean mentally, to really mentally believe that you are the owner of your destiny. Like what happens in your house is under your control. You are the adult. I'll leave you with this last story, I'll never forget. We lived in our house two, maybe three years. I mean way too long for me to be having this discussion. The oven was so dirty, it needed to be cleaned. And I was like, the oven needs to be cleaned. Like I knew this for multiple weeks, like it was smoking at that point. I was like, the oven needs to be cleaned. The oven needs to be cleaned. And I'm like, how do you clean an oven? I don't ever remember watching my mom clean an oven. I didn't know how to clean an oven. And I was like, the oven needs to be cleaned. I don't know how to clean an oven. I don't know what I thought, did I think like, magical people were going to come and I was going to come down the next morning and my oven was going to be cleaned. And so I was looking at the oven and I was thinking, I was like, you, Lisa, you own the house or you have the mortgage on the house. You, you have to clean the oven. So I was like, okay, how do we clean an oven? So I go to the store, I get the easy off spray or whatever. And I did the whole thing where you spray it and you clean it all out. And I'm telling my girlfriends about this over dinner and they go, well, don't you have a self cleaning oven? I was like, what do you, fairies? What, what, I'm gonna push a button and like little magical people are gonna come out and scrub the inside of my oven? Like, what would a self clean? How does that work? That's not a thing. Come home, you guys, I had, there's a button. You push, it actually self cleans your oven. I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know. I was like 30. <laughs> I had no idea how to clean an oven. By the way, I've since learned you don't wanna use that self cleaning button. I did it when I shared this podcast episode and someone told me don't do that because you'll break your oven it did it did it broke my oven so anyway do your own research but these are the kinds of things i share on the podcast who teaches us how to clean our oven who teaches us how to meal plan who teaches us how to make a budget who teaches us what to do when there's a squirrel in your attic and you're in the middle of a pandemic nobody but we can talk about it we can talk about it on the podcast and then you can get your mind around being the ceo of your home and so for that reason I think that's why you guys picked the podcast to go on to the final four because it really does. It really changes your mindset around how you view your house. And when we view something differently or we hear other people's stories or we can hear our story in other people's stories, then we can start to reevaluate why we do what we do. And there's usually logic behind why we would do what we do, but especially at home, it's only what we've observed inside of our own family. And sometimes we need a bigger uh, lens in order to see all the opportunities that are there for us. So your final four is set. I don't, I don't envy you. Tonight, you're gonna be voting on, is it the Sunday basket or planning day? And is it the paper solution or the podcast? We will have a winner on Sunday. And then on Monday, you will be voting and we will bring you your final Champion at 3.30 on Monday. The app, you guys are getting a pre-recorded one because the Workbox, plan, the Workbox Club is live right now. And Facebook, we finally figured out how to get inside of the group. So uh, Facebook, we'll go back and we'll add the videos from the last couple of rounds of Organized 365 Madness. This has been so much fun. If you're watching the games, watch. Are they dribbling or are they 
traveling. I think they are traveling. See you guys on Monday.